Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Andy here from Sentinel Defense, coming back with another bench session. I uh, just want to talk today about uh, a question that I get asked quite a bit in terms of rifle building. Uh, one, one, thing, one topic that I get asked a lot is, what should I build? Should I build a, 16, a rifle with a 16 inch barrel, or should I get a 14 and a half inch barrel with a pinned and welded muzzle device? Now, Cliff's Notes, 16 inch. But I'll explain why here. And I'm going to break this down into two segments. I'm going to talk about building versus buying commercially. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, what happens is what a 14 and a half inch pin and welded setup is described as a setup where you have a 14 and a half inch barrel and then you take a muzzle device that is at least one and a half inches long so that it is longer than the 16 inch minimum necessary for barrel length. To not be a register, or to not be a short barrel rifle by NFA regulations, you take that one and a half inch muzzle device, you put it on, and you pin and weld it into place so that it's permanently attached, and then it is considered to be part of the barrel. That is what it refers to. As you can see on here, I have a 14 and a half inch barrel. Well, I got a Battle Comp 1.0 on here, and this is a uh, 45 caliber casing from an old Kimber I got rid of. Um, on top to just simulate the extra half inch because I don't have any one and a half inch muzzle devices. Um, this is off of a registered SBR, so nobody started sending me all sorts of hate mail. Oh, it's a it's an NFA weapon item. Yeah, it is. Okay. This is a 16 inch barrel. Okay. Battle Comp 1.0 on here as well. I put the Battle Comp on this thing just so that we have we're dealing with apples versus apples. This is a 16 inch down the fence chrome hammer forged mid length. Uh, lightweight profile barrel. It's a phenomenal barrel, by the way. Battle Comp 1.0 on top of it. This is your length right here of a 14 and a half inch with a one and a half inch pin and welded muzzle device versus a 16 inch with the standard muzzle device. Okay. If you look at right here, where the top of my hand, where the palm of my hand is right here, you're talking about a difference of approximately one inch, maybe a little bit more. This is not a significant difference in length. Okay. When you're dealing with, initially, just a standard 16 inch setup versus a standard 14 and a half inch setup with an NFA setup, the difference between here and here, as I measured, it was approximately one and five eighths inches. It is not a significant amount of difference. I will tell you that having used both of these and tried both of these, both of these suck working in very close quarters. They suck working inside of vehicles. They're not designed to do that very well in terms of very, very, very tight quarters. This is why smaller SBRs like a 12 and a half inch or 11 and a half inch or 10 and a half inch barrel, they're just superior for those purposes. Okay. So what a lot of people like to do is they like to get the 14 and a half inch. It's kind of the thing right now is to get the 14 and a half inch with the one and a half inch muzzle device, pin and welded permanently on there. Honestly, there isn't a whole lot of difference between these two, and it's you're not really gaining any advantages by going to this. At most, you're maybe dropping, you're maybe losing an ounce. You're not losing much weight, you're losing a little bit of muzzle, uh, you're losing one and a half inches of mu uh, actual barrel length for muzzle velocity if that's a concern for you. For general range use, it really is not a big concern. So why do I say the 16 inch is better? The reason why 16 inch is better is because this is not permanently attached. If I have a problem with this, if I have to change the uh, change any component out underneath the handguard, any component out on the upper, it's as simple as putting this in a vice block, sticking it on my vice, and then loosening up the uh, muzzle device. Unfortunately, when you have a 14 and a half inch pin and welded upper, you have to remove that pin and weld before you can take that muzzle device off. And if you don't do it correctly, you can damage your barrel. So much so to the fact that you may have to replace your barrel. I don't know about you, but if I don't have to, I don't want to have to go buy another Daniel Defense, Bravo Company, or Nevesky barrel that's going to set me back $300, $400, $450. I don't want to spend that money when I don't have to. And the reason why it happened is because of something that was avoidable. You know, if I'm going to replace a barrel, I have no problem replacing a barrel if I shot the barrel out. You know? Not that's that's that comes with the territory, but I would much rather be dealing with just a standard barrel where if I have a problem with it, I can just unscrew the muzzle device, start pulling components off, 
and be done with it. It's a lot easier to service, it's a lot easier to work with, and when you're building, you can build a rifle, be done with it, and you're done. You don't have to go and you don't have to get a pin and welded, you don't have to take it to somebody else if you're not able to do it. Additionally, if you decide that you don't like your muzzle device, like with one of my previous videos, I posted up where I replaced this battle comp with a PWS triad flash hider. Um, I just did that. It was just quick off, quick on. Nice and simple. You can't do that with a pin and welded setup. Okay. You, if you won't need to be able, if you need to change your muzzle device to meet your mission, to meet your mission requirement, that gets a lot more difficult with a pin and welded setup. That's why I typically don't uh, recommend them. Not only that, but there are different gas systems. As you can see right here, gas system is right here. This is a carbine length gas system. These carbine length gas systems in a 14 half inch setup tend to be a little bit less finicky. But when you go to a mid length gas system, like we have on this, where your gas system is coming up two inches higher, uh, two inches further up on the barrel, you start to deal with issues regarding back pressure. You start to deal with uh, you have to make well. You have to make sure that you're running uh, a rifle that is properly built with a proper size gas port in order to pull off the right amount of gas to be able to run your rifle. When you're building, this isn't always going to be possible. And there are different muzzle devices that can actually change back pressure and things like suppressors and so forth also alter that back pressure. So you have to be aware of what's going to happen when you start fiddling with your weapon. And one thing that has been noted is that with 14 and a half inch pin and welded setups with a mid-length gas system, they tend to run pretty well with mil-spec quality ammunition. Not just mil-spec ammunition, but quality mil-spec. If you're using XM193, if you're using XM855, if you're using the higher grade actual 556 stuff, you're not going to have as many issues. If you're running the low power stuff like the PMC Bronze or the Wolf or Tool or any of the other steel case crap, then you can start having issues with them because you're going to be dealing with a lot less pressure, a lot less gas that's going to be in there. So what you have to understand is that you need to build your rifle based on your needs, but you also need to build a rifle that's going to be reliable. So consider that as an option, right? Now, what about purchasing commercially? There are certain manufacturers that have made 14 and a half inch uppers uh, with pin and welded one and a half inch muzzle devices, and they have made phenomenal setups. Bravo Company is the first company that comes to mind. The EEG Tactical Carbine is a is, is one such setup, and I've seen that thing in action. The thing is a beast. It's awesome. It's phenomenal. It's a great weapon. It's exactly what I would expect from BCM, and, it's, and it is exactly what I would expect to come out of something that Paul Buffoni has made because he makes great, great. He makes great stuff. Um, the HSP Jack Carbine, another phenomenal example. I haven't seen one in action yet, but I would assume it's going to be the same as the EAG Tactical because it's Bravo Company and they know what they're doing. Uh, what about others? What about other options out there? You start going to other companies, you go to other companies that maybe don't have the reputation for having that high quality, then you start throwing stuff into the wind. Then you start having to be aware of, well, who am I dealing with? How do I know that they got the gas port correct? How do I know that they set it up correctly? You have to be aware of all this stuff. Not only that, but you have to be aware of what ammunition you're using across the board for all those weapons. Um, Bravo Company makes their weapons to run off of 5.56 uh, pressure ammunition. Actual 5.56, not 223. So if you stick a low power cartridge in there, again, like PMC Bronze, which is known to be a lighter weight cartridge, I mean, there, and there's others too, um, and especially the, the steel case stuff, you can have some significant uh, operation issues. One of the things that pops up is that when people build rifles, they have a tendency to stick in things like heavier, heavier buffers uh, and heavier uh, recoil springs. If you have an upgraded spring, or if you have a heavy buffer, a, an H2 buffer, or an H3, something like that, you start throwing stuff like that in there, you're going to start causing problems. Um, if you're running a mid-length system and it's not operating correctly, you're starting to have issues where it's not cycling all the time, and especially with the 14 half inch, then you have to be aware, first thing you need to do is check your buffer and check your spring. Make sure you have a normal spring in there, and if your buffer is an H buffer, remove the H buffer, stick in a normal carbine buffer. Put that back together, 
try that out and see how that works for you. That'll typically run a lot of things. But what I will say is that it's the 16 inch with a mid-link system will run things better than a 14 and a half inch pin and welded uh, mid-link setup. It's just what I've noticed, it's just the reports that I've seen, all the, everything I've read, everything I've seen in person. That's just my observations. Do I have quantifiable data to hold up a you know, paperwork that says, yeah, here it is, this is all the stuff? No, I don't. But I've actually seen this stuff, and in the reports I've seen, this is the way it is. Okay? And the only reason why I'm saying this is that so you guys can be aware when you're purchasing, something that you may want to do, maybe rethink about it. Think about the logic behind it. Think about long term, what do I want to do to make myself, make my life easier? You know, like I said, if you're buying a built upper, a purpose built upper that you will never need to modify again, that is perfect the way it is and that is designed to be uh, durable and never need work because it is just dead nuts reliable, like what BCM puts out or like you see with Novesky, you're fine. Get one. They're, you're you're going to be happy with it. And I would certainly encourage you to do so. Me personally, I'd really have a 16 inch because I don't see a whole lot of difference between the two. But you're going to be getting a quality product either way. But if you're going to be building, save yourself the headache and go with a 16 inch. If you're going to be purchasing from another company a purpose built upper, go with a 16 inch unless you can actually truly know that it is a validated company that knows what the hell they're doing. Especially in times like this, there's every company out there starting to ramp up their production, they're throwing out things, they're, they're putting stuff out as fast as they can. I can tell you this right now, I know for a fact, Bravo Company will not build a rifle with anything other than grade one components. They will not put out a rifle if they can't put grade one components on it. And that comes straight from Paul Buffoni. He will not put out a crap rifle. He won't. But there's other companies that, in order to meet demand, they start using stuff. They start using grade three, grade four, grade five components just to meet manufacturers uh, or manufacturing demands, just to meet their numbers. And we start going to those lower grade components, and you start having problems with your uh, machining and with the way that you put your rifles together. Then you start to have issues. You start to have quality control issues, quality assurance issues. You know, when did they build? When did they build that system? When they drilled that hole, did they clean all the burrs around it? Did they, you know, did they get it exactly right? The quality companies are pumping out rifles as fast as they can, but they're still doing it with quality. There's a lot of companies out there that they're only concerned about the numbers, and especially with regard to that, that's why I say remove one of those aspects that remove a variable. Okay, what you're doing is you're removing a variable, and that's why I said go with a 16-inch setup. It's it's just going to make your life a little bit easier. That's the way it is. I'm not begrudging people who use 14 half inch setups with pin and welded one and a halfs on them. I've seen a lot of them function phenomenally. I've seen the EAG ones run like sewing machines. They're fantastic. But I've also read of people having certain issues with those uppers uh, in terms of not not those particular uppers, but 14 half inch pin and welded uppers. Uh, in terms of running different types of ammunition through them. And, I mean, if you want to build your own stuff like I like to do, 16 inches is just going to make your life a lot easier. And while we're on that subject, if you want a 16, if you want a 14 and a half inch with a pin and welded upper just because you want an SBR-like rifle, what's the purpose? Because it's really not an SBR. This isn't an 11 and a half inch setup. This isn't a 12 and a half inch setup. You're not running a Mark 18. I mean, it's it's barely shorter than 16 inches, you're not really getting anything out of it in terms of an SBR experience. So if you're going to go with an SBR, go with a proper SBR. Get a 12 and a half inch, get an 11 and a half inch, get the, get the tax stand for one of those and get one of those. Ideally 11 and a half inch is a minimum because just for reliability issues or reliability sake. Otherwise just go up to the full Monty and get 16 inch and it's just going to be a lot easier. If you guys have any questions, post them down below. Appreciate your uh, subs. Tell, tell all your friends. And uh, until we meet again, keep around the chamber.